Hi, I'm Peter Charles here at Hooked Fly Fly Fishing, and today we're going to tie another one of my patterns. It's a simple tie. It's based on the partridge and orange. It's a little bit bigger than what we uh, use for trout, but it's quite effective, and I've always found that uh, orange and brown is a good color combination for early in the steelhead season on our local rivers. Uh, so we'll get into the tying the pattern, but before I do, I want to make a point about how this particular fly and flies like it are effective in dirty water even though they're small. I'm going to put up a picture of a steelhead hen, lovely hen, that was caught using this fly and uh, you'll see the color of the water. Now admittedly it's a little kicked up because of landing the fish, but that's basically the color of the water. It's that murky and yet these fish still see that fly and they still hit it. So let's get on to the materials. My hook is a low water salmon in a size 6. Now, at first I'm going to be tying on this neon fluorescent burnt orange uh, that I'm going to use for the body material. I'm also going to use it as thread, which is very typical in the partridge and orange that your thread is also the body material. The tail is going to be this fox squirrel tail. My rib is a small uni French gold. I'm going to finish it off with fluorescent orange uh, vivas tenot. I'm going to use some fluorescent orange dubbing. And that is just to put a little dubbing ball behind the hackle so the hackle stands up. I'm going to be using a partridge feather. Uh, now try and find one that's got some brown in it, not pure gray. You could also use hen as well if you wanted to, if you don't have any partridge. Or if your partridge is all gray, you could use grouse. You know, you could use anything that's a reasonably brown feather will do. So let's get started with the tying. I'm going to put on my orange neon cord. It's almost like a cord. It's quite thick. Now I have my uh, squirrel tail already stacked, ready to go. And we want it about, oh that's probably a little too thick. Let's take a few of these out. There we go. We don't want too much of a tail. Too bushy a tail. Okay, about there. I'm going to trim that off. A lot, but a couple of turns to keep it there. Now for my rib, a couple of turns for the rib. I'm going to pick it, pull it all up, and skid the thread down to give it a nice even wrap. I come back, touching turns. Okay, now we wrap our rib. I like to put a turn right at the back to corral any uh, hairs that are sticking up. And if you have a, a problem one, you can always trim it off. Now we'll advance forward. Now I'm just going to put a half hitch to take off the cord and we'll switch over to the 10 alt thread. Now for the dubbing ball. You don't need very much. It's just enough to keep the uh, barbs of the partridge from folding right back if you're uh, fishing it in a, a relatively fast flow. I would say the faster your water is that you normally fish, the more of a dubbing ball you want to use. A little bit more. There we go. Now for the partridge feather, I'm just going to grab it by the tip, stroke it back, tie it in.
I'm just going to come in with the fine point scissors and take off that tip. Finish that off. A half hitch. Now, I've crowded that eye a little bit, but um, we, that's not a panic if you do that. Uh, one of the benefits, it ends up, your dubbing ball ends up larger. So just take our hackle pliers and sweep it back, sweep the barbs back as you make your turn. If you get any one of them going forward, bend them back. Try to pinch your barbs to close it up a little bit. Okay, and if you get some stray ones, we'll deal with them at the end. There we go. Now I hold onto the barbs while I tie my quill because it has, has a tendency to go forward. I'll fill up that space and I'll just wrap my quill underneath, put some turns in, break it off. And now I can finish up the head. I mean, your choice whether you want to make a nice neat head or you want a nice bold head, because this is fluorescent, all right? This material is all fluorescent. So a big head is going to really glow. So I will just finish it. And I want to show you what that uh, material looks like. And you can see how hot it is. So this will really glow under uh, overcast skies. If you want to go with more subdued orange, certainly go for it. If you go fish mostly clear water and you might find this too hot, you know, maybe use just one material that's hot uh, color, like the, the thread for the head, and then the body is a more subdued orange. Your choice. But uh, because my water is often off-colored uh, and sometimes quite dirty, um, having a fly that glows is a good thing. So let's put some head cement on it and finish this up. So there's our partridge in orange, ready to go fishing. Very effective pattern. Uh, I love using it. I've caught plenty of steelhead over the years on, on patterns, either this particular pattern or patterns very similar to it. Uh, sometimes without a tail, sometimes without a dubbing ball. I've done it in a variety of different ways, but it's relatively large partridge and orange. You can use hen if you want, if that's all you've got. I mean, you can really mix this up. It's just the idea of brown and orange in a, a partridge and orange style, uh, Yorkshire wet style, sized up for steelhead. So give it a try. It's effective and it's fun to fish. Cheers.